All right. Excellent to another installment of Coffee with Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Grantstaff with SMG Endeavors. I'm a collaboration and uh, strategic planning consultant, and always excited to bring um, our clients to the table to have a conversation about their experiences with the process that we use and with just really helping their organizations or their programs grow stronger and more strategic in the action that they can achieve. So collaboration is the theme of Coffee with Jeremy and I'm so excited to be collaborating today with Sean and Eddie from Green Corps. Sean, uh, why don't you kick us off with just a little background of who you are and Eddie, maybe you can talk about who you are and then we'll dive a little bit more into Green Corps and what you guys do and what you've done with us. Sure. So I'm Sean Lydell. I'm an assistant commissioner at the Chicago Department of Transportation, uh, where the Green Corps Chicago program is based. So Green Corps Chicago is a program, and I'll let Eddie talk about it a little bit more. But Green Corps Chicago is a uh, over 22-year-old uh, green job training program for individuals with barriers to employment in the city of Chicago. With that, I'll turn it over to Eddie. Hi, and I'm Eddie Jones, a program director for the Chicago Department of Transportation and I oversee the Green Corps program for the city. So, Eddie, tell us a little bit more about what Green Corps actually does and how it works to um, better the lives of, of under, underserved Chicagoans, I guess is a good way to say that. Sure, so Green Corps has for the past 22 years brought on adults with barriers to employment to do job training. Over the years, the training type has changed, but we try to work with low income, underserved adults that have faced challenges throughout their lives in uh, finding a foothold in the workforce. So currently we are training for landscaping, ecological restoration, tree care, and associated kind of uh, work opportunities. It's actually really intensive training too. I think that was one of the things that I learned working with you guys. I, I didn't realize that so much went into it. So like they have to get licenses and everything in order to be able to work in those fields. I never knew that. And, and I'm sure that comes with a lot of its own challenges as far as the testing and things like that that have to be done. I would imagine. Yeah, the, the whole point of the program, Jeremy, is really to um, help individuals with barriers to employment, and that could be all different kinds of barriers. It could be substance abuse issues. It could have been an involvement in the criminal justice system or other things like that. Um, but to really provide them with uh, our, our participants, our trainees, with a career path, to really give them opportunities to move forward so that they can better their own lives and, and better the communities that they live in and better the city of Chicago. Well, I actually got to work with a couple of your trainees and see their work firsthand, uh, especially going through the strategic planning process. Before I get into that, though, Sean, you and I first met back at a board retreat for Bike Share, for National Bike Share Association. Right. Um, so, kind of what prompted you to kind of reach out and start thinking about working with us from the Green Corps perspective. So right, as, as you said, Jeremy, I've been, um, I'm on the board of the North American Bike Share Association. About a year or so ago, we really decided we, we had, it was, we were just wrapping up our first year as, a, as an official uh, 501c3 nonprofit, and we really wanted to figure out what are those quick hits and things that we need to do to move this organization forward and really to uh, provide value to our members. And that was kind of what um, really uh, led to my uh, interest in, in working with you on Green Corps. Because Green Corps um, has, for a number of different years, um, we've been talking about, we've, we've transitioned over the last four or five years from a uh, you know, highly funded program with lots and lots of city funding to a program that really focuses on um, for service. So we wanted to provide the same uh, degree of training, wraparound social services and other things for our trainees. But we also needed to, as, as funding, as our funding exchange, we really needed to diversify 
um, how we're paying for the program. So we've shifted more to a fee-for-service model. Um, but really, that's obviously can be a somewhat stressful situation. So what we're trying to do is, and, and, and the reason we wanted to work with SMG is to really figure out, okay, what should Green Corps be doing? What, how should we be structured? What's the best way for us to achieve the goals that we're trying to achieve, which is really just bettering the lives of, of uh, individuals with barriers to employment in the city of Chicago? And how do we do that? Um, and how do we do that as well as we're doing it, if, if not better, actually? Uh, so one of the things that we did with you guys, just kind of taking a, a little bit about the process, is we brought a design team together. The design team really hoped to um, kind of start thinking about those structure and strategy questions. And then you guys engaged. You shocked me. I got to tell you. I did not think that we were going to end up having a room of people that had, I think there were 70 people there, um, coming together for a day, talking about your strategic framework, your mission, your vision, your goals as a program, helping to create action plans, and even giving some feedback to internal structure team, which is going to start looking at the structure itself um, during the implementation phase, which we're getting ready to start. So. Just kind of giving a little bit of background on the process for our listeners. And we're talking today with Sean and Eddie from Green Corps Chicago, who just went, recently went through what I like to call the accelerated planning, uh, structure planning process for you guys. Um, and if you want to ask them questions, you can always do that in the chat window, watching right on YouTube, or you can send them in on Twitter with hashtag coffee with Jeremy. So coming back to you two, let me ask this question. What was it like going through the planning process with us? Were, uh, what, what was it like using the process? What were kind of moments that you kind of reflect on getting to that summit stage or even at the summit? Well, I don't know. Let's go over to first because Sean was just talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I would say one of the things that uh, – I reflect on when I when we first started talking to that stakeholder group was thinking about who all would we bring into that conversation that we ended up having with um, would it be our typical stakeholders but we actually reached out and brought on current trainees into it some past graduates and made it a much more rounded and um, balanced discussion. There were social service agencies, there were public agencies, there were most of our funding partners were there as far as the fee-for-service work. So I think mm -hmm. all aspects of what we do, we had spokespeople in the room to actually give us honest feedback on where we should go. So it was getting that, that uh, first group, the design team, talking about it in a way that energized that process to get that kind of room full of people, which I think um, gives us a better balanced view to work with. Sean, I, one of the things that I remember telling you at the beginning was it's going to be neat to, from your perspective, to watch a board retreat versus how does it work when we bring in those larger conversations? So what was that like for you going through that process as you think about that? Sure, yeah. I mean, first of all, I just want to say part of the the, the reason that the interest in working with SMG was really the fact that I, so I'm a planner by training. I actually have a planning degree. Uh, I've done water watershed planning for, I did for about 11 years before I came into my current position. And we spent lots and lots of time working on plans, drafting plans, um, you know, obsessing over language and words and things like that. And so I was really impressed coming into the board retreat. I came in uh, perhaps a little jaded thinking, oh, it's going to be another process like that. And I came out of it with a, you know, feeling really invigorated, like we had come up with something. Uh, we had actually, um, we had actually come up with a plan and really come up with a roadmap to improve our organization and really make sure we're relevant to our members. 
and but like you said, it was 13 board members. Um, so it was a much, much smaller group. So it was interesting the way it was broken up in this process. We had uh, the design team who really helped us sculpt, as, as Eddie said, sculpt a plan for what this larger strategic planning session would be like, where we then had 60 people in the room, which as Eddie, I think already said, was you know, amazing for us to see that many people giving up an entire day, um, which really shows you the value of what the program, uh, our program means to all of the individuals who are in the room. We were really excited by that. Um, and I, you know, the process was was actually really similar, but it was broken up into smaller tables so that we could actually have these continue to have. I mean, I think part of the with my smaller board retreat for the North American Bike Share Association, we really need to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations, and we were able to still do that on with the Green Corps program, but just by breaking up into smaller tables and having those having those conversations and then reporting back to the larger group as part of the process. So I think. You know, we, we, everyone got to have their say, everyone got to provide their input, um, and everyone had a voice in the room. And I think that's a really powerful tool, um, not only to getting, figuring out where people are at, but also, you know, getting their continued buy-in and interest in the program. You guys had a really very positive evaluation data that came back from your summit as well. And I think you know, one of the things that I think is really neat that you're doing now, and it came out of the process. So when we started looking at the structural piece, right, and we said, let's have part of the team look at that structural piece. And the design team, the original plan was to start talking about structure at the summit. The design team really gave that feedback that, you know, let's let's take this in a way that allows us to focus on what we want to do really look at what are the funders and partners that we can do to make that happen and use that as a way to look at your structure so now you've started the implementation phase i was kind of joking with these two before we started today uh because we're actually kicking off the implementation phase where we're going to start zeroing in on your structure and bringing that team back together with your design team. Um, so from a process perspective, you'll have that coming up and you'll have, I would imagine some type of circle back with your summit participants. Mm -hmm. But what else is kind of on the, on the cuff for Green Corps as you guys are thinking about what's next and that you're gonna be looking at? Eddie, do you want to take the first crack at that? I think one of the things that will be critical to us is we're at a juncture now where we need to decide if there should be an additional organization. Right now, Green Corps is a program. It's mm -hmm. not an entity. So we have to find a way to be able to diversify the funding stream, as everyone suggested. And it seems that adding some some piece to the program, whether it's a standalone not-for-profit or a, a social enterprise or some other mm -hmm. entity that can actually do fundraising and broaden that aspect of, of the maneuverability of the program to, to look at grants differently, look at our partnerships differently. So that mm -hmm. seems to be at the, at the top of our list. Sean, I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you'd agree with that, but that's what I think we keep coming back to. Yeah, no, I would I would agree. And I think that part of our, um, you know, really, we started this process thinking, oh, we need, you know, we just need to create this nonprofit and we need to spin off Green Corps. Because as Eddie said, Green Corps is, it's a program of the city of Chicago. Uh, I, I'm a city staff, Eddie is a city staff, and we have one other city staff person who works on the program. Um, along with a, a, you know some great partners at a company called WRD Environmental, who helps us to uh, additionally staff the program. Um, but the, you know we came into it thinking, oh, we need to set up our own nonprofit. We need to uh, really just spin off from the city. But as we had um, a lot of the discussions actually in the design team, and then also at the summit, we realized there's great value to being a city program. For example. In and of itself, Eddie and Curtis, the other individual who are city uh, employees, 
are um, along with myself are fully funded. Those are those are um, salaries and benefits that we don't have to that are, don't have to be and costs that don't have to be borne by um, a nonprofit, for example. We do, however, think right. there's some really good benefits to having a nonprofit or other arm to help us with some of those efforts. And Eddie alluded to some of those things, but even things as simple as you know, as a since we are our current contracting partner is a for-profit corporation. Um, mm -hmm. If we need them to buy trucks, which we're working on right now to operate the program, um, right. we, we pay tax on those trucks. And so looking at some of those options where even just aligning um, with a nonprofit existing or a new nonprofit to actually be able to save the program money, which ultimately we can invest in the trainees and individuals in our program rather than putting it into um, sales tax, for example. Um, even something as simple as that is something that we really need to consider, and it and it is of value in and of itself to the program. You know, the funding thing comes up all the time too in this work, and I think it has a lot to do with the work that uh, probably that most of our clients are doing. It's it's work around serving someone who may not be getting the services that they need or. Kind of overcoming those disadvantages, I guess. I, I think there's two, I, like from my perspective and what I've seen, there's this natural tendency where we think it either has to be X or Y. And one of the things that I actually learned being with your structure team and going through the process with you is stuff about uh, an LC3 organization that can work to really look at so social entrepreneurship and how is that being factored into the equation or are there different parts of the business that we can have ran in different ways so that we're able to tap into funding opportunities like what you're talking about so i i was actually really impressed with how the structural piece has developed so far and the way that you guys really tapped into the people at the summit and into your design team um to get that feedback that you needed yeah so. that was really valuable for us and i think you know certainly realizing like you said it's not an x or a y or an a or b it's it's actually a c which is a plus b i mean it's really a combination i think is what we're going to ultimately end up landing on is some sort of um program and funding model and and uh structure that actually we get both the benefits on those sides we are a city program but we have this strategic um, alliance with, or a, you know, or a, a you know, a standalone nonprofit that um, is set up specifically so that we can actually be as agile and uh, responsive as a program to to really make sure the program is as effective, and um, you know, and we get to serve as many uh, trainees as we as we would like to, which is you know, we would love to be able to serve more than we currently can. Okay, so you two, tell me this if. If I'm in the Chicago area looking at our, our audience who may be listening from the Chicagoland area, or even just wants to get more engaged or consider funding the program, what are some of the partners that you do want to try to engage um, or potential funders that you're looking at, kind of generally, right. like stakeholder groups? I would say right now the, you know, the vast majority of our funding while we don't, most of it, as I said, is project specific. We've, we've, we've developed uh, a lot of partnerships with our park district in the city. We've developed a partnership with the county's uh, Cook County Forest Preserve District. Um, we also have a really good relationship with the state, with our Department of Natural Resources, who has funded us through a number of different grants. Um, but the one thing we haven't done, and, and, and our, I should say the other thing is, our own uh, city, the, the Department of Planning and Development, uh, it's been an amazing partner for us. We're, uh, you know, on a regular basis, they're investing in projects that we do in communities throughout the city, um, you know, like trail restoration projects, uh, school projects, all different types of things like that, that really benefit residents throughout the city, plus really give our trainees an opportunity to put what they learn in the classroom uh, to work in the field. Um, but the one thing we haven't done so well on is uh, foundational funding. So there's a lot of really strong funding uh, opportunities out there, 
but we haven't really figured out how to crack that nut and figured out how to get into um, kind of their their realm and what they're funding. And so that's that's a challenge for us. Um, the other thing we are doing though that, uh, is um, we've been working uh, over the last year or so with the core network, and Eddie can probably talk about that a little bit more. Go ahead, Eddie. So that's a, a partnership that we've already begun to explore. We became new members to the uh, national core, the core network, so a branch of uh, the National Service Core Corporation for Service. Sorry. And the, um, the ideal for that is to develop into what is seen as an accredited and uh, maybe a 21st century core, which, is, uh, which would open the program up for uh, more grants that go along with the U.S. Forest Service or the U.S. National Park Service, but looking for more opportunities from the federal level as well. And then seeing how that aligns with some of the other workforce opportunities locally. So we're not that attached to the local workforce development board. Um, and hopefully we can develop that a little bit more strongly as we uh, work our way through the core network accreditation process. Um, and I think that's a good one that we're already in that mm -hmm. process of developing. I was reminded, though, as you were talking about that, that, the other big thing that people kept coming back and saying to us during the summit was our inability to get our story out there. We really lack in uh, a communication arm that can develop that the message of what we're able to do and get it out to a broad public. I would say that that would be another area that would be great to find somebody who would want to partner or help with that where um, we're not, that could donate that time at a lower cost. So mm -hmm. I think that's an area that we're really um, open to. We're working on our own website and it, it, you know, it's a slow process to do that. Just like strategic planning is within <laughs> a small group of people. It's nice to have somebody on board to keep the process moving move it along so quickly so we don't feel like we're stagnating. And I, I think I would add on to what Eddie just said too is that, you know, in, I think in the summit someone raised, someone basically said that Green Corps Chicago is one of Chicago's best kept secrets. So we're this program that's been around for 22 years and we've served 500 graduates from the program who've, who've received training and moved on to better lives. Um, but a lot of people don't even know we exist as a program. Um, a lot of residents of the city don't know we exist as a program. And I think that is certainly one of the things that we're really interested uh, to Eddie's point in, in, in having people learn more about, because we really think, I mean, as I, I said at the summit, you know, Chicago's experiencing some challenging times right now, and uh, there's never been a, a better and stronger time for a program like Green Corps. There's never been a time where we needed a program like Green Corps more. And we need to let people know more about what Green Corps is and the services and benefits we provide to the city of Chicago. I, I'm curious, do you think that you would have thought about the the public branding issue if you hadn't have had the summit, that that would have even hit the radar? You know, I think we've, we've talked about that. We've thought about that. I think part of it is uh -huh. still, and, and something we'll be working on as a follow-up is figuring out, Okay, how do we do that? How do we actually move right. forward and get that information out to people? And also, quite frankly, thinking about it more strategically as we do projects in neighborhoods, you know, part the, the neighborhood partners and organizations doing press releases and other uh, things, getting the mayor out to events to actually talk about the projects and talk about Green Corps, I think is something that we've it's certainly um, been heightened in our minds as something we need to really, really redouble our efforts on. and Sean talking about their experience going through strategic and structural planning processes uh, and working on Green Corps Chicago. So I, I absolutely loved one of the things that you guys did really well. And I have clients who always talk about doing it, Sean and Eddie, but you guys were the first one who actually released the video um, 
uh, kind of talking about the program. And I just, it was amazing to me. I know, I think there was a couple people when we released it that said, oh, I don't know, it may look a little uh, not as great as it could, but it was an amazing video, and we actually included that in the description for people to be able to go watch that as well. Um, I just, I, I was really impressed with your design team and how much they really have uh, engaged in this work. So I don't know if, if we're kind of coming to a close. So final reflections that you guys might have have over, you know, as you're thinking even about today's conversation or where you go next. You, uh, you cut out there for a second, Jeremy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was saying uh, we're kind of coming to a close, and I would say, you know, if either of you have any final thoughts that you want to leave our listeners um, you know, they may be looking at going through a similar process um, or even wondering, you know, do we really need to spend the time engaging people in planning? Um, what are some final thoughts that you'd like to leave our listeners with today about either your experience with the process or either where you're going, you know, with Green Corps Chicago? I think uh, I'll, I'll jump in first and I would say, you know, having been through the process a couple times now with s and um, I really feel like, and, and coming into it, as I said, as a skeptic, as, as a planner, and as someone who's been through the process many, many times, I just, uh, you know, really what, after going through the, the planning uh, retreat for the board on the North American Bike Share Association, I came back, and Eddie can, Eddie can vouch for me on this, I came back to her and said, okay, we've talked about doing strategic planning for Green Corps for, you know, several years now we can do this and we can actually come out with a result and a product that's actually going to help us move our organization and our program forward. And we can do it in a pretty quick and, and, uh, and a manner and come up with something that's really going to help us. And that I came out of uh, the bike share retreat feeling that way. And that's what really drove us to engage on, uh, on Green Corps Chicago. Nice. Well, we will check back with you, sir, in a year and see if you're still saying the same thing about Green Court <laughs> Chicago. Eddie, any final thoughts you want to leave the group with? Sure. I'll go off of what Sean said. Well, actually, it's a, a word that you used earlier, I think, might be really helpful for other small organizations that don't have a lot of internal staff. You used the word accelerated. And by doing what mm -hmm. we did, we could pick up the pace of, you know, Sean's been kind in talking about how long we were saying we should do something like this and addressing the same questions over and over again internally, which gets us nowhere. So the process is feels like you're taking it out of your hands, but you're actually accelerating it down a road with some really good people providing feedback. So I think that that word accelerating that strategic planning process, being fat, uh, seeing results quicker, is really important when you don't have that internal capacity to spend a lot of time thinking about how to do everything. Having somebody come in who can guide you on your ideas. We, yes, we wanted to engage this group of people, and then it was this much larger group of people that we weren't expecting, but it was really great. Um, I think that's really, really valuable to a small, a small organization that doesn't have a lot of time to do this and uh, gets a lot of, a lot of feedback from a really wealthy uh, wealth of knowledge. So yeah. making the most of those stakeholders' knowledge about how they see you and where you can go. Well, uh, and we even noticed that with our corporate larger corporation that we're getting ready to possibly start some work with actually in your area. And one of the things that they're able to do in corporate is they can just tell the employees, you're going to these meetings where you guys actually had to convince your partners, come spend a day with us and help craft our plan. And you did it very well. So we'll definitely be having you guys back on to kind of check in and see where things are, are uh, landing in uh, six months or so. And uh, Eddie, if someone's interested in working more with you guys, either as a partner, funder, or even a trainee, 
Where do they go to get more information? Well, we do have, for someone interested in the program, there is a website they can go to. It's, Sean, help me out, www.greencorechicago.org. And it's Green Core is G-R-E-E-N-C-O-R-P-S, chicago.org. Um, awesome. With Fred, oh, go ahead. I think it would be getting in touch with Sean or I personally to have a more in-depth conversation. Awesome. All right. Well, we will definitely uh, make those connections for you. And I encourage anyone who's in the area wants to get in involved with the organization, please do so. Um, definitely, if you've got the communications experience um, or even foundation experience, engaging foundations uh, in your work. So it was really good working with you guys. I thank you so much for taking time to come on today. I know both of you are really busy. I'll be talking with you tomorrow at our kickoff meeting for you guys. Um, and uh, for our listeners or viewers, thanks so much for coming out. If you were able to join us live, we appreciate that. If not, glad you took the time to listen. You can always find more apps of carmy.tv. And of course, visit sgendeavors.com for more information about our consulting services. A big thanks to Ryan and the crew over at SGE Media Group, um, who is our division focused on bringing collaborative um, strategic planning solutions virtually. So thank you, everybody. And this concludes today's Coffee with Jeremy. See you next uh, in two weeks.